Hey everyone, Rua here. It's almost been a year since I did a theory crafting video like this, with my last outing covering how I'd adjust Black Mage. This time around, it's Summoner. Summoner does have practical applications, but it can be so much more. What got me thinking about this was when I was putting together the video I made on Master Levels, and about how I thought the game desperately needs more jobs capable of supporting a group. I'm not talking about minor support either. I mean another job capable of filling the role a Geomancer and especially a Bard currently does. I've always been aware of what Summoner can do damage-wise with Astral Conduit, you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who isn't. The support side of Summoner is barely known in comparison, and I think that even Square Enix themselves aren't aware of how outdated some of the mechanics behind the job are. Okay, let's get into it right now. How would I fix Summoner? When it comes to damage output, the job is actually alright, but it could use some adjustments under the hood. Summoner has always been about spike damage, big hits. There's three main problems I can see. First is the frequency in which it can deal out these big hits. Waiting 21 seconds between abilities just isn't good enough when jobs like Corsair and Bard can punch out weapon skills every few seconds now. Reducing the reuse timer of avatar abilities would render Astral Conduit somewhat moot, so I don't think that's the answer, but reducing the timer of Apogee would help. The second problem is that avatars just don't last long on the front line. This is likely intentional design since avatars are able to be resummoned easily, but let me flip this on you. Certain avatar abilities scale damage with TP, but rarely do avatars even survive long enough to gather enough TP. Siren is one of the only avatars with good damage output, who also has the ability to self-sustain. The third problem is one Summoner shares with Beastmaster and Puppetmaster. It cannot increase the damage output of its avatar directly, and not without the support of a Corsair or a Geomancer. It's a problem for all three pet jobs, but especially for Summoner, since Beastmaster and Puppetmaster can function even without their pets being supported, whereas the avatar is all that matters for the Summoner. Going over to the support side of Summoner for a moment, the job spends so much time swapping between avatars as needs must that it often cannot keep a single avatar out for a desired favour effect. Compounding this further is the aforementioned brittleness of avatars. Although it sounds like a familiar problem geomancers face, you really can't compare this to their lure puns. Lure puns can be reapplied, and when they are, they are at full power, whereas avatars favour takes time or MP expense to charge in a hurry. While we're talking about Geomancer, it has an ability to make its lure puns impervious to damage, and it can also restore lure pun HP, further underlining how Summoner's base mechanics have just not aged well. So, looking at it from an overview, here's what I'd do to the job. I'd give all avatars higher maximum HP. This can vary between avatar, but they all need slightly more survivability. Astral Flow could use a boost as well. Avatar special attacks only available under Astral Flow are rarely used since they completely drain MP, so I put it to another use. I give avatars both regen and regain under Astral Flow, increasing their survivability and powering up their attacks through the regain. I would reduce the reuse timer of Apogee from 3 minutes to 1. This would give the job more damage output outside Astral Conduit, most notably the ability to either double burst off a skill chain or generate then burst off a skill chain themselves. Mana Seed could also use a lower reuse timer and a secondary function. Lowering its reuse timer to 1 minute 30 seconds puts it at the same time as other pet restorative abilities, Spirit Link, Reward, and Repair. The secondary effect would be exactly that. It would be a full HP restore for the avatar, easy enough to incorporate and it makes perfect sense. I'd add two new abilities, one helping DPS output and the other helping party support. Oversoul, getting its name from the mechanic in Final Fantasy X-2, would help lessen Summoner's reliance on Corsair and Geomancer. Oversoul would greatly increase all an avatar's attributes, like a Beastmaster's run wild. The trade-off would be the doubling of perpetuation cost. Potentially steep, but manageable all the same. The ability would behave like a stance, remaining active even if an avatar is defeated and recalled. The second ability is, admittedly, a carbon copy of a Geomancer's Entrust, almost to the name as well. And Spirit would give the currently summoned Avatar's favor effect to a target party member and then dismiss the Avatar. And Spirit and Entrust would not stack, so if both jobs were present, some thought would have to go into it. 
Summoner being able to keep at least one favor effect active in a tough battle would be great. Being able to maintain two would take skill, but ultimately pay off greatly. Fixing mechanics which concern the summoner themselves is only part of the overhaul that needs doing. Some of the abilities avatars have are woefully out of date and aged about as well as a bucket of shrimp in the summer sun. Their fixes really are common sense and I'll draw attention to them here. First up is Carbuncle. Carbuncle is actually in a decent spot right now. Healing Ruby 2 and Soothing Ruby are brilliant healing abilities and the aforementioned adjustment Apogee would help Carbuncle's role as a healer. Pacifying Ruby is also excellent, the only Enmity Erase ability in the game which can be used on another party member. Glittering and Shining Ruby are absolutely worthless at the moment though. I would turn Shining Ruby into a miniature Rampart, a multiplicative special damage taken reduction. The two abilities would not stack, as they currently don't, so it can't be abused. Glittering Ruby would come the equivalent of an AoE regen 4. Although the regen from Ruby could not be increased, it would stack with Carbuncle's favor, which is also regen. It would also scale with summoning magic skill, so it couldn't be abused at lower levels. Carbuncle's favor could also use a slight increase in its maximum potential. Leviathan could also use a few adjustments. Avatar HP being increased would increase the cure power of spring water, itself already a really good curaga and ailment removal rolled into one. Spring water only removes ailments that can be removed with a NAR spell though. This needs changing to cover all status ailments like Carbuncle Soothing Ruby. Soothing Current should be able to fully cap cure potency received by itself and making it scale with summoning magic skill would let it do that. Tidal Roar should also scale with summoning magic skill to a maximum of 50% attack down. Sounds like a bit much at first, but consider Geo Wilt and even a Beastmaster's Leech using Acid Mist, or its Slug using Corrosive Foos, then it sounds fair. Finally, Leviathan having magic accuracy bonus as his favor never made sense to me. Leviathan is meant to fill the role of a support healer, so why not make his favor reflect that? I'd change it to magic evasion bonus. What about Fenrir's favor then? More on that later. Ifrit doesn't need a whole lot of attention, only a little adjustment. Ifrit is one of the heavy hitters of the avatars, and he already fits this role well. The only adjustment I'd make to Ifrit is to change Crimson Howl from a weaker war cry to a straight up attack bonus buff, akin to Indie Fury with a Dunner. Not only would this potentially free Corsairs from Chaos Roll, it would also buff Ifrit himself, giving him the means of keeping his damage going outside of Oversoul. This change would also make it so Ifrit would not be reliant on Corsair or Geomancer for his best and consistent damage. Diabolos is one of two avatars in dire need of an overhaul. Nether Blast and Night Terror have niche uses, but Diabolos' support abilities are absolute dross and need buffing majorly. Ultimate Terror could become a single target Mega Absorb. If the target is already being hit with defense and magic defense down debuffs, draining its attributes to this degree would give Diabolos another niche use. Impact would achieve the same end, but eh, it's just an option. Nocto Shield is currently a pathetic AoE Phalanx that is overwritten by any other Phalanx, and rightly so. If allowed to scale with summoning magic skill, it could be useful once again. I think a cap of 35 is fair. That's the same as an accession phalanx from a scholar subbing red mage. Dream Shroud is likewise a pitifully weak magic defense and magic attack bonus, a mere fraction of the power of the buffs we have today. Worse still, their effects differ depending on the time of day, which is absolutely stupid. Okay, okay, thematically it makes sense, but that time has passed, it's time for practicality. Dream Shroud should scale with summoning magic skill and end up roughly equivalent to Indie Acumen or Wizard's Roll. Finally, Ruinous Omen's maximum potential should be upped. I'd make it an amplified version of a Beastmaster's Purulent Ooze, capping at minus 20% max HP down, fitting since it requires Astral Flow and it's not a guaranteed land at the cost of all of your MP. At last we come to Fenrir. Fenrir needs the most help out of all of the avatars. Fenrir's support abilities are all, except one, determined by Moon Phase. Like Diabolos, this makes sense thematically, but practicality is more important. It's time to do away with such an antiquated mechanic. Lunar Cry would be great for hitting target accuracy and evasion. Ecliptic Howl would work in tandem with it to effectively give the frontline a 200 accuracy and evasion buff. 
freeing a bard from madrigals and mambos. Ecliptic Growl should cap out at plus 25 to all attributes, not stepping on a white mage's toes with regard to their boost spells, rather complementing them, since they stack, allowing DPS to reach a similar attribute buff to a red mage's gain spells when they are stacked together. Heavenward Howl has the potential to be something unique. Potency is a buff currently only available from certain temporary items, and it gives critical hit rate bonus. I would change Heavenward Howl from either Endrain or Aspir to Potency. Stacking this with Ramu's favor could be very interesting. Finally, I would change Fenrir's favor from Magic Evasion bonus, which has been given to Leviathan, to Magic Haste. Fenrir's favor, coupled with Garuda's Haste Cut 2, would allow a summoner to fully cap a group's Magic Haste category. The favor effect being transferable with End Spirit would also mean that the summoner could safely switch between avatars as needed and not lose haste cap for their group. That covers adjustments to existing avatars, and from here on I might sound as though I'm going off the rails a bit, but hear me out because I'm not done yet. I think it's finally time that Alexander and Odin be taken off of Astral Flow and become usable. Alexander and Odin could be considered the ultimate avatars for support and damage output, at the cost of them both having significantly higher perpetuation costs than all the other avatars. Alexander and Odin both have abilities they can use in the various battlefields they can both be fought in, so adapting them for a summoner's usage would not be overly difficult, nor would it be a strain on developer effort. Siren was very much the same if you remember. Siren initially was only an NM to be fought in a storyline mission, and then again in the form of Telus and Race and Jima before finally becoming a usable avatar. It's been done before, and it can therefore be done again. The only real problem I see is how large Alexander and Odin are. Their avatars would need to be scaled down in size, or there could be real problems from others seeing what is going on in the battle. So what would Alexander's abilities look like? Keep in mind, these are adapted from existing battlefields, so I'm actually not going too far off of what is already established. Holy 2 is a given, it scales damage with TP just like Siren's Tornado 2. Divine Spear would function like a damage dealing version of Leviathan's Tidal Roar. It being AoE adds another much needed addition to Summoner's AoE damage arsenal. I would also not give it a skill chain property, making it akin to Sanguine Blade or Mystic Boon. Radiant Sacrament is where Alexander could get interesting. On top of being another AoE attack, it would be dangerous to use with Apogee before Divine Spear. Radiant Sacrament inflicts a hefty magic defense down in an AoE. Radiant Sacrament would also be an alternative to Geo Malaise, and it would stack with the same, something other jobs like Beastmaster and Blue Mage can already do, so it's not too over the top. Mega Holy would be Alexander's strongest attack. It'd be distinct in that it would be one of Summoner's only level 3 skill chain options. None of the avatars have this capability for some bizarre reason. Even a Beastmaster's pets have level 3 skill chain options, so it's time Summoner got the same. With ward abilities, Alexander could become very broken very quickly. Perfect Defense was infamously exploited during the Legion era, but that was before the time of Runefence awards and Paladin's Rampart getting massively buffed. Perfect Defense would only be usable under Astral Flow, but it would no longer wipe Astral Flow when it's used. At maximum power, Perfect Defense would give a massive amount of special damage taken reduction. 50% seems extreme, but consider that a party member already being at 50% damage taken reduction already would half this figure, since you're going beyond 50%. Immunity to debuffs, dispel, and enfeebling magic remain as they were, as would the decay of Perfect Defense when it drops to half duration remaining, in this case 45 seconds. If Geomancers can practically shut down all danger during Bolster, then Summoner should be able to as well during its SP ability. Void of Repentance is an AoE terror, not overpowered considering Beastmaster has a Conal terror, and Blue Mage has two AoE terror spells, Blistering Roar and Spectral Flow, the latter of which it can cast freely without any abilities being active. Gospel of the Lost would be another powerful healing ability, combining Healing Ruby 2 and Spring Water into one. Alexander's higher perpetuation cost would offset how strong it is. Alexander's favor would be regain, a neat effect to have with this more defensive orientated avatar. On that, and a final note, Alexander would have innately higher physical and magic defenses as a trade-off for his higher perpetuation cost, having a native plus 50% defense bonus and plus 50 magic defense bonus. 
As it stands, Odin is perhaps the most useless avatar in the entire game, which is really saying something considering his status in the lore of the world. Zantetsuken has not aged well, at all. It's absolutely atrocious and it's time Odin was used to his full power. To start with, the accuracy of Zantetsuka needs to be massively increased to the extent it's actually worth using on occasion. Zantetsuka would be the strongest AoE attack in the game, either outright killing everything in range or otherwise dealing heavy damage if it fails to one-shot. The chances of Zantetsuka one-shotting would decrease with the level of the targets against that of the summoner, with the MP consumed increasing the chances further from there. Even if it fails to one-shot, the damage of Zantetsuken would be substantial enough to warrant its use. Goes without saying, but Zantetsuken would not one-shot NMs. Still sounds overpowered? Then consider in this day where blue mages can annihilate entire hordes of targets with an AoE doom. Well, not in Crawler's Nest anymore as of a few days ago, but hey, it still works in Shoal C. <laughs> Sangatal would have to be significantly toned down from its battlefield version where it inflicts a full AoE dispel. Here it would remove three buffs targets have, making it stronger than Fenrir and a Red Mage's Dispelger. Gagnaroth would be, as far as I'm aware, Summoner's only Conal attack. While it wouldn't be the most damaging of Odin's attacks, it would convert the damage it deals back into Odin's HP, like Siren's Hysteric Assault or Sanguine Blade, giving Odin solid self-sustain. Ulfnir would stand out in that it would inflict a heavy AoE defense down, Minus 35% defense down is strong, but not too extreme considering Geo Frailty and a Beastmaster Slug having a comparable effect. Ofnir would also be a great ability with Apogee for the next ability. Gerothir would be Odin's strongest attack outside Zantetsuken, scaling damage with higher TP and having summon a second level 3 skill chain property. Gerothir would round out Odin's offensive arsenal. Odin's ward abilities would be focused on enfeebling targets further, or helping him keep in the fight longer. Yiga would mimic what a thief's bully ability does, inflicting an intimidation effect on the targets, occasionally preventing attacks and spells from going off. Valfoda would have good situational use, inflicting silence and gravity in an AoE, stopping spellcasting and weighing targets down. Siren already has Silenska, but having another version of it would be welcome still. Dreadspikes is self-explanatory. It would give Odin another form of self-sustain, especially if he pulls aggro from a crowd with Sangatal or Orfnir. Odin's favor would be store TP. It's hard to overstate how important Samurai role is for DPS. It's honestly the most impactful DPS buff in the entire game. Summoner having an equivalent of it would finally allow for more job diversity or options. Odin's favor would likely be the go-to favor to transfer with End Spirit, and that's fine. It'd be great to have options. Finally, Odin would have an innately higher attack as a trade-off for his higher perpetuation cost. 50% would match Ifrit's bonus from Crimson Hell, and a minor save TP effect would complement his role as a heavy DPS avatar. So in conclusion, the game desperately needs more jobs capable of filling the support role slot, not just as a tribute act, but as an actual viable alternative to the dwindling supply of dedicated supports. Summoner to me is the clear choice, with many of its mechanics stranded in the level 75 era in dire need of updating. Who knows what may come at the end of the master level climb, a point system akin to merit points perhaps, but what would go a long way is helping everyone get there easier by having more options like the ones outlined here. Anyhow, cheers for joining me on this theory crafting journey. I'll see you all next time.